It's NASCAR time. How's it going, Eric? Going well. Got a road course coming up this week. Where's the Indiana hat? Uh, yeah, not this week. <laughs> not after the men's and women's kind of laid an egg. I mean, what's I mean, week. seriously, you, you had to go ahead and beat Kent State and then and then lose to Miami. Yeah, it just probably one of the worst games they've played in a while. I, they just they almost looked like they didn't want to be there, to be honest with you. So they need another coach. pretty frustrating. Yeah, they just baffling that they I mean, it's basic basketball that Miami was doing to them. And you and you can't. Well, that's they were out coached. Yep. They got a better coach. So you switch coaches, Indiana moves on. So. Yeah, I mean, it didn't. It wouldn't take much to, not to downplay Miami, but it's like third tallest player with six seven. How you had three guys taller, taller than him. I mean, it's pretty simple. They're doubling the pick and roll or the the pick. Hey, it could be worse. You could be a Purdue fan. Yeah, hey, that that made me happy Friday. <laughs> yeah, that was. Yeah. Wow, that was. Yeah, that's not good. That was incredible. No, I did say this is NASCAR time. Yeah, so, that's right. We are NASCAR. Uh, yeah. yeah, but our own March Madness going. There on. is, yeah. there is Sweet Sixteen in a couple of days, and uh, we won't have our Sweet Sixteen until when does it start? Playoffs? Uh, I was going to say Labor Day week, uh, September. Okay, I got it here. September. Our Sweet Sixteen starts September third. All right, can't wait. Start of the NFL yeah. season. Yep. Yeah. Right. Leading in. Yep. So this is the sport, though, that carries us through the summer. Not baseball. NASCAR. And even though baseball is every day, but NASCAR is uh, still a little bit more exciting. Uh, yeah. And road course racing uh, can be exciting. And this is one of the better road course racetracks. And it's only been a couple of years. But, I mean, if you look at all uh, the way that, they, that they're able to kind of stay together pretty much and battle and and. We, we had a great finish in this race last year. It was one of the best finishes we had all year in the sport. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, we, we definitely believe, or at least I know we've talked about it, maybe a little bit overkill on the road course race racetracks, but this is definitely one that's uh, so far so good. Yeah, and this was made as a pure road course, right? I mean, cause Indianapolis Motor Speedway in Charlotte, those weren't made for necessarily stock cars in mind. Um and then you have some of the other ones are pretty narrow, but this track is a pure road course that was made for all sorts of road course racing, not just NASCAR. You had F1, IndyCar has been there. I think MotoGP has been there. So there's certain areas. Yeah, it's, it's hard to pass in certain areas, but there's other areas where these cup cars can put on a good show. And we saw that last year. So I'm curious this year, how will it look? I know they made some tweaks um, to the road, like the short track and the road course package has been updated. Naturally, we saw that in Phoenix, and I don't think it got any better there. So as long as it doesn't decrease the road course package, I'd be pleasantly surprised if, uh, if it did, or not, or pleasantly surprised if it even helped better. Um, but if it just replicates what we saw last year, then that's a win. And, I think that's what we're after. Yeah, and, and, and what is it? It's, it's still the only thing we, we, need, we, don't, we won't know until this first race, at least, is whether or not Toyota has figured yeah. something out. Yeah, they were bad. Um, With the exception of Christopher flash. Bell. Yeah, he was the only one. But, but, um, but shouldn't that was... prove something, though, is that if Christopher Bell can do it, you know, I mean... But, yeah, in, in all fairness, too, he was third in this race last year, so I know we'll get more details yeah. that were picked later, but his Roval win wasn't necessarily a win baseball pure speed. Sure. Remember, they, he, was, he was sick come into that late race caution and then they pit for tires. And then he had the ca- couple cautions in the end that helped close the gap, fresh tires. He won because of you that. Mean a, but, you, mean, you mean it was a win in NASCAR to a driver that really didn't deserve to win? Oh yeah. You know, it happened uh, again. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. So Incredible. I mean, you look at the rest of their finishers and the races like Truex had about 10 and six races. Hamlin's best finish last year was 13th. Kyle Busch's was 11th. Uh, Christopher Bell obviously was good. Um, Bubba, somehow, who never considered himself a road course racer, was probably their second best. Yeah. So um, they struggled mightily. So we'll see if the updates help them. Denny Hamill didn't sound too optimistic about that. Um, so we'll see. But where this race 
Sunday is going to look different than the past is there's no stage breaks. We finally get what we're asking for here. Yeah. Thank so, goodness. Because be that, I was just watching a replay of the race uh, before and I was going, oh, yeah, that's right. I, it just slipped my mind because you, you saw Blaney. I think it was Blaney and Suarez at the top for the first stage. Yeah. And then starting the second stage, they're not even on the on the board on the top no. 20. Oh, that's right. I forgot. We got to deal with this again. But no, we don't. No, because that and that's a huge strategy play on road courses that it it took out and added a new layer because in the past you knew on road courses there was two built in cautions for the stage breaks. And there's not typically a lot of cautions on a road course in general. Yeah. Um so if you already knew where they were coming, and we've talked about this basically before every road course show last year was the the guys that typically feel like they're gonna have a shot at winning would just punt on stage points because you could pit with two laps to go in that stage and not be penalized, and you just come back out at the tail end of the lead lap. However, you all knew that the cars in front of you were going to pit at the stage break, and therefore you got the track position. Yeah. And then rinse, get, rinse, wash, repeat, do it yeah. again who, the next Who wants stage. to win versus who wants the stage points? Yes, and that was the constant theme. This year, that's not an option anymore. They're going to have the stage points, They'll have this still, hey, this is lap, I need to look at what lap it is, but here, stage is over, here's the flag. However, keep going. Don't stop. The top 10 will still get the points. The stage winner will still get the, the, the playoff point. That doesn't change. What does change is they're not stopping. You just That's keep moving. Great, move, great decision. This is why we have to applaud NASCAR whenever yep. they make these types of moves because, again, they don't make them as much as we'd like, but they do make them. I mean, they're not like yeah. baseball. I mean, I mean – now, it's taken them, what, 100 years to finally make some uh, significant decisions that have changed the baseball, uh, which may, uh, it sounds good to me. Put a clock yeah. on things. Yes, good. But uh, Speed it up, get going. Yeah. But NASCAR does them a lot quicker. So that's, uh, pl- you got to applaud them for that. Yeah. And you got to think, too, the other the drawback, speaking of the pitch clock in baseball, um, NASCAR road courses are so much bigger. And if you're under caution, it takes five, 10, 15 minutes just to get around. Cause you gotta think you gotta, you take the, the flag, you gotta come around slow. You come around, you catch the pace car. And then you come around and you let the lap, the lead lap cars pit. And then you come back around and let the lap cars <laughs> yeah. pit. And then you gotta regroup. Yeah, right. Then you gotta do the two. So you're talking six caution laps it's just ridiculous. right there. On a track that's three miles in length, like Coda is, and then Road America is four minutes. Those cautions are going 15, 20 minutes in length. Yeah. Now you're drastically cutting that out of the race because you may only have two cautions total for the day. Plus, it adds that pitch strategy comes involved. And it happens a lot in IndyCar. And you call it the over or undercut. Hey, I'm going to pit on lap 36, but I might stay out a lap or two longer, hoping I can get quicker lap times, clean air. I don't have anybody in front of me. I could pit and maybe come out ahead of you or the undercut. Hey, I'm getting slowed up in traffic. I'm going to pit now, and then I'm going to be towards the back because I pit it. But I'm going to have fresh tires where I can really close the gap. So you you open up all kinds of different strategy plays that should make this race entertaining in that standpoint. Are, are they going to be? Are, uh, will the strategies also be similar to say Pocono, where we want to maybe we could pit twice instead of three times? You know that that crazy. Yeah. Guy. Can can they do that at this track? You can. You just start playing it backwards. So you say, if you, this is the lap, um, this is the distance we're going to. Granted, you can't plan for overtimes or stuff, which road courses, you don't get a lot of that um, overtime. So then you go, all right, well, how many laps can we get in the tank of fuel? Will the tires last that long? And if they do, well, we can go backwards. So we'll pit, if it's 90 laps and we get 30 laps under a set of uh, a can of fuel, then we know we pit at lap 70. All right, 30 more laps to be lap 40. Okay, there's 10 extra laps there. Do we need to save a bit somewhere to yeah. gain and make this fun? So, yeah, you have that. You have the factor of maybe you pit, you run a longer stint, which means you burnt more fuel, which means you have to be on pit road longer for fuel versus somebody maybe pitting shorter, which means less fuel, means less time on pit road, clean air. You come out and run faster lap time. So, so we could see that. So, yeah, you know, I think you will. You will. I okay. think you're going to see all that. The only difference is that I caution, um, which we could segue into the TV talk, is is the TV going to accurately talk about this 
and strategize. That's a problem. Yeah, because it, you if you put any anything that is going to potentially force the dry the booth to think on their feet because they don't ever do any research. No. Then it usually is a disaster because they don't pick up these things very quickly and they don't set us up properly like they should. It's, hey, no. why don't you guys do do your job? It, just like again, I don't know what they do. I, I I know what the NFL does. I know that they bring the head coach in, they're bringing the coordinators in. They have meetings with the with the host of the uh, of the, the play by play guy, and they sit there and they ask questions so they can prepare themselves for the show, for the game. I'm assuming they're not doing this in NASCAR. I get it. There are, you know, 40, te- 40 drivers and such, but couldn't you just say, hey, you know what? This week we're gonna, I'm going to talk to six of these drivers. Next week I'm going to talk to another six. Couldn't you just do, do a little bit of homework so you can pick the brain of some of these crew chiefs and find out what their strategy might be so that if they, oh, you know what? I'm going to make sure that I talk to at least two or three different crew chief strategies so I'm prepared for them all. Yep, you would hope, because I like Larry McReynolds. I think he does a good job. He should be at the track, not in the North Carolina studio. Um, but he hasn't been a crew chief in the Cup Series in decades. you got to have somebody, and honestly, they won't do it because I know they got their warm room, but the Hendrick guys that are suspended, hey, maybe bring them in and talk to them, and maybe yeah. have them be an analyst. And like, hey, since you're not here, can we maybe use you for the broadcast? Yeah, but where was because, Chase last week? Yeah, yeah, why was he not there? That, that was another law call. So, you know, they're not going to do that. And by the way, McReynolds, just to your point, wasn't he the one that called it at Phoenix that if you come in and pit and take two tires, you should be fired? I think yeah. he said something along that line. Same and then, like the top yeah. six or seven drivers all took two tires. Took two tires. Harvick. Yeah. It's like, so wait a it, second. It, I thought you said that they, that would be like a disastrous decision to take two tires. Apparently not. That was the, that was the, the winning move. Yeah, and that's where the out of touchness comes in play. It's like you need somebody recent that knows the next gen car and that knows the strategy because it's going to be so. If you don't cover the strategy angle, then you this race could look boring to people because they're not going to be as much on top of each other because you don't have the cautions to bunch them up. But you might have a guy, as I said, like he's sitting in third place, but he's getting held up by the second place car or even heaven forbid a lap car. And they're like, you know what? We're losing lap time to the leader. So maybe let's duck in a few laps early. We know everybody's going to be ahead of you. And then they also have to pit. But if you're running lap times now faster by yourself, and then the leader pits and comes out in the middle of lap traffic or in the back, well, your lap times are quicker. And now you're ahead of them by not passing them on track. And that's the strategy that you're going to see. But if they don't portray it to you, it doesn't. You, how are you going to know what's going on? Yep. And that's the fact. And then plus, I, honestly, too, Fox, their coverage has been horrid this year. All the commercials, I think Mike Joy, I like him, but him calling out race fans on the TV broadcast doesn't help. That keyboard warriors, he calls them, it's like it's insufferable. It's like just admit you guys are wrong. You're calling the track the wrong name. You don't accurately portray what's going on. You're not animated. You watch an F1 broadcast. I think Vinny Hamlin said this on a uh, podcast. They're all animated. They're in IndyCar races. They're excitement. And it's, you listen to the radio broadcast. Let's just say that's the pass behind me. Ryan Blaney's on the inside. He's in, like, and then the box, oh, well, Ryan Blaney's going to look to the inside of turn one. And it looks like he, and let's, let's play the graph of a cartoon character of him on the screen. It's just like, it's terrible. It's just like, you're just watching and just, can they get a pulse in there? Can we do something? It just, yeah, there's need to be a, a go between. You don't have to be like radio, but you got to yeah. you, you do have to bring that energy in some way, shape, or form. And again, they just don't. There's no energy. They're calling out fans. It's it's almost like it's like are you purposely trying to not get a future contract with NASCAR or what? Because this is this is the future. And you look at the ratings; they're just nose diving every week. And granted, some of that is that Chase Elliott effect, like I talked about. Um, I think it's a big reason. We talked about that again. By the way, what was the percentage down another, in Atlanta? Yeah, another 15% it down. It was 15%. Yeah. Um, so, you again, it's another down. And it's like, so you have the Chase Elliott effect. You have the broadcast. It's just Well, just imagine if good. you would have promoted, hey, by the way, Chase Elliott's going to sit in with us uh, for whatever. And you don't even have to tell him for how long. Just, hey, Chase Elliott's yeah. going to sit in with us. I mean – Right there. And you don't put them on early. 
Put them on in the middle no. of the race, towards the end, even. Make sure that you don't even. You could just. Hey, I don't. When is he going to be on? Well, you got to wait and see. And all of a sudden, here's Chase Elliott, mid mid race, end of, towards the end of the race. And how is that not bringing viewership up? Yep, and it's the 21st century. We've seen it in the past. Um, I've seen it in rain delays where drivers are in their buses yeah. and they're interviewing them on TV. Even though Chase Elliott wasn't at the track, he, he was tweeting about the race. Could you not get him on like a Skype or a Zoom call? And like, hey, in midway to report, uh, you can even tease it. Like, hey, Chase Elliott's going to give us, uh, he's going to talk about his, uh, his incident, his injury, how he's feeling today. Uh, just we'll get his thoughts. And that would get people to tune in. His fans would tune in. But if you don't even promote it, and granted, he wasn't even there, didn't even, they, I'll even know if it's a discussion to have him on, but I feel like they missed the boat. I mean, and yeah. It, sure. That would help close some of your ratings gaps, but now it's, he's, it's just it's baffling. Yeah, but no, we'll well, they're, it, yeah they're, in, they're in trouble now, and I don't think it's going to change. Yeah. I, I don't see it changing. I don't so. You give people a reason not to tune in, they're not going to come back. And if you have another bad – granted, this race this weekend, you got so much international star power, you should get some extra viewership, but what are you going to do to keep them? What are you going to do to paint the picture? Because Kimi Raikkonen's there. Uh, Connor Daly from IndyCar is coming. Um, Jensen Button from F1 is there. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, Grant, that's more organic. He, he's more local. But those race fans know road course strategy. They understand. So they're going to watch this broadcast and be like, this is completely dull. These guys don't get excited. They're not telling me anything <laughs> about strategy. Yeah. I just, it, it, if they don't capitalize, it's, it's another loss. So well, they won't. You hope they find something, but no. I, I would say for those watching this broadcast or this show, watch the strategy. Even if they don't paint the picture, watch the strategy. It's going to be when they pit, there's going to be called an over, overcut and an undercut. And that's, you're trying to do that for the driver. The undercut meaning you pit before him. Overcut meaning you stay out. So you're going to have that. Some guys, again, they might take two tires in the end, or they might have run a stint longer and like, hey, we're going to save fuel, run this longer, cut a pit stop out, and then at the end, we can take a splash and go, and we're on pit road the least amount of time than that one, and now we're in the lead. Can we hold them off? So it's going to be a pure race. Just but imagine, too, actually- if you, you know how they always used to, in the old days, for baseball fans, diehard fans used to go to the games in the stadium and used to have their their notebooks, and they would yep. follow the – you know, E3 story and all sorts yeah. of, you know, really you have to, kind of nerdy kind of way to follow it. But just imagine how you could kind of do that for this sport in a race like this, where you can yep. get the fans engaged somehow, where you're, 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 you're getting them. To, maybe you're even putting like some sort of um, like your own notebook. Hey, print this out on our yeah. website. And we're going to show you how to follow the different when the different cars pit with the different strategies. We're going to we're, we're going to have someone maybe even live on the website that is going to show you how to how to correctly follow each specific strategy. And then you could decide for yourself as, as you're as you're trying to figure it out. Well, who do you think is who do you think has got the, the you know, the, the better path to victory based on strategy? So. There's just so many things they could do with driving me crazy. I should just call them up and ask for a job. But Yeah, I mean, that, that makes too much sense. You can even put some sponsorship logos on it and have them pay for itself. And But it, it just would be so simple to do that. And you just write down because it's – and then they've got the app where you can see the lap times, and you can literally see how many laps that they go and when the tires start falling off. And the goal is to maximize how far how far you can go and how far you're on that tire as it's falling off. And that's where the pitch strategy comes in. Some guys are just going to ride it out. And because here's the other factor. What if the yellow comes in the middle of it? Yeah. And you pinned off. You could stay out longer. And then let's say you're out. You're out by 20 seconds. These guys have all pit behind you. But a caution comes out. That field flips. You now are behind all those guys because they already pit. So you got to call the danger zone. These guys start pitting. The pit window's open. They're already on pit road. They come out. So if a caution flies... They're down the lead. So you have the back markers, the back half of the field. They're all just going to pit early and hope for that. Hey, you guys go ahead. I'm going to pit now. And if a caution comes out while you're still out there, yep. so how long do you stay out? That's the bunch of fun strategy stuff it that is going to go on behind the scenes yep. that you've got to talk about it Sunday. So I'm hopeful 
Fox will. <laughs> yeah, right. But I'm also realistic yeah. to say, I don't think, yeah. and I like that Gunther Steiner from F1. Have you seen the Drive to Survive no. series, the F1 on Netflix? No, I haven't so seen it yet, no. He's, uh, it's good. And he's kind of like the character. He cusses a lot. And, but here's the key. He knows F1. He's not, he doesn't know NASCAR. They have him as the driver analyst on the Fox broadcast booth on Sunday. I'm like, so what kind of strategy game plan is he actually going to bring to the booth other than bringing kind of an F1? Okay. So he's going to be in the booth. Well, we'll but see, like, hopefully. You just kind of need a... I don't. I like it for his commentary, but what's he actually going to bring for the race fan at home watching? Yeah, want to know better. what's going on? So we'll see. Yeah. I, okay. It, well, can't get any worse, but that's true. I hope yeah. they can get better. That's true. And speaking of viewers, uh, don't forget if you enjoy uh, this video, uh, please subscribe. Uh, we're getting close to two thousand. I know our goal is about two hundred thousand, but uh, you have to start somewhere. And yep. you guys are doing a great job. Our, our traffic numbers have uh, pretty much gone up. While NASCARs have gone down every week, ours have gone up. We're going up. We're going yep. up. So appreciate that. And uh, that's why sharing the videos are also very important. Uh, the more you share it, the more uh, you know new viewers we could possibly get. Uh, and all of that comes in handy. And also your comments. Um, matter of fact, we had some really uh, excellent comments this week. Links dominance. You got to like that call name great stuff as always fellas so thanks links thank you yeah. and scotty b aka madtown baller uh fantastic show love the setup and very informative and professional thanks guys thank you scotty thank you yeah and joe kleska ross chastain for the win this week didn't happen but still great video so thanks to joe so yep hey i thought he would be too they were a little baffling they weren't kind of anywhere to be found until Chastain got to the front of the end, but yeah, and 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 that's a good segue to uh, talk about Atlanta because look, it, was it better than Phoenix? Well, just about anything is better than Phoenix, yeah. Especially because at any moment something could happen in Atlanta, but unfortunately it didn't. And I think the no. problem is is because they're racing with the draft, and as you've said before, of course, it's not the the big super speedway size tracks. We're more danger could occur it's like they're kind of more and especially the the whole thing and we've we've gone over this before at other tracks usually not draft tracks and i know sometimes the draft tracks will have an edge inside or out it happens but this was like a ridiculous edge and this is not something we normally see in drafting as well oh, you better be up top if you're not up top i mean legato was not going to win the race unless he found a way to strategically do a great job. And even though he, I think when he moved up, he was probably fifth when he decided mm -hmm. to do it, but Hey, I don't care. I'm on the fast part of the track and the seas should part as they usually do down the stretch, especially on the last lap. And uh, he had the best car. So great driving by Joey Logano to go out and, and, and get off the bottom of that track and get up to the high, high end where it was faster and picked up the win. Yeah, and it was just like, uh, I wrote about this on Sunday, the the typical old Daytona Talladega races where they all line up to the final around the high line. Yes. That's all the first couple stages were. And this track in particular, this week, this past weekend, I guess the higher lanes built up some kind of like residue, like kind of like a, like a dusty type thing that they said. That they, that's why in qualifying, you saw a couple drivers spin okay. early. It's because you... You want to run the high line of those tracks as it builds your momentum. You want to make the track as big as you can in qualifying because they're flat out. The engines are wound, they're, they're tuned up, but then they got the, the what they call, let's put restrictor plate, not the tapered spacer. They got that on it to restrict the power. So you want to make the track as big as you can so you get the power built up. So they run on the high line. Well, the high line, for some reason, was completely dirty and it caught them off guard and BJ McLeod spun. And then so the earlier qualifiers were having to slowly work their way up to start building more and more of that uh, dust off and more tire rubber in. And it fully never came in. If you remember in the, in the Atlanta, they were kind of around the middle lane, not all the way to the top. And as you're wound up already running that lane, it takes a lot of energy to pass the lower lane because you're keeping the engine wound up going the lane that they were in. So it really hurt. Like you said, that, that top middle lane to the top, if you could get another lane up top, then it would have probably made it three lanes. But 
the higher you go, the more momentum you get built up, the easier it is to stay flatter, and which naturally makes it harder to pass. Plus, the track isn't big enough, like a Daytona or Talladega, to build the inside energy. Because if you already got the energy built up in this lane, you're just humming around there. You need a bunch of cars to go inside to line up and start pushing to build the energy there. But you still, you're going to have to somehow get more energy to the top lane, which obviously we saw never yeah, happen. And that's not and it's going to be hard to I don't know if they can figure out a, how to change that because that's going to be the, the way it's going to race. That's not going to be good. No, and I like it. It's the catch-22 because the old Atlanta, you don't have the pack. You have them a little spread out, but you could pass because the tire fall off on the other lanes. And But this one, they're all close together, but without drafting help and without hitting the right lane – you can't pass. You could. You just kind of stalled yeah. out. And I think we saw that with Logano and Keselowski. They were the two best cars in the end. But is that only because they were the they were the top two? They were running side by side for a while, and it's like nobody could pass <laughs> yeah. them because it's just you're kind of blocked yeah. up both lanes. So that yeah. But Logano, he, he was smart, and it was nice to see him race together clean, and we didn't have just a bunch of stupid cautions in the end and make it. Because the Xfinity race and truck race, I don't know how much you watched that Saturday, was the worst racing you'll ever see. I know see. the Xfinity race. Uh, it's funny. It was like, I forget what time it was. I I think I was done with dinner, and I was like, no, nah, I'm not even going to put the Xfinity race on now because it's too late. And then I was changing the channels, and I just happened to go buy it. And I'm like, why is this still on? The seven laps. I think I got it right at the time when there was just a. Was there a, 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 a playoff? Was it? Did they go to overtime? Or was it there? Uh, if they did, it was. I can't remember exact amount. If they, no, they, they didn't. Did it. Okay. it ended because yeah. it was. So I don't know what, what, but it was like I just can't believe that this is still going on. And it was because the the early part of the race, all the way through the second stage, the longest green flag run they had was nine laps. They just kept crashing. Wow. They could not gain Why any that? momentum. And the truckers just, they, uh, well, at first I thought it was a byproduct of this track. And it was like, these guys are just, it just kind of looked like the end of a Daytona and Talladega every lap. These guys are just wrecking each other. And that gave me kind of concerns for Sunday. I'm like, oh, we can't have this for a, a 400 mile race. This is going to be terrible. Yeah. But the cup guys are a little more talented and decided that they, we're going to run this lane and it, while it looks single file early it kind of the laps are clicking along I'm like all right this is better than what was yesterday um so i'm glad that didn't happen at the end of the, the cup race they ran each other clean but as you said logano he was stuck in the, the inside lane with a few to go he got behind because like well i guess i better get behind him and, and draft for him for a little bit and what ended up happening was the top lane uh bell hamlin and um I don't know why it's escaping me. There's three Toyota drivers running up top. And Bell, and he mentioned this, and we talked about this, even about Larson. He's not typically up front on super speedway yeah. races. And he's like, I, oh, Reddick. Reddick was it. it was Bell, Reddick, and Hamlin. Uh, he's like, I just didn't make a good enough move. He should've, they should have been more aggressive to three because they ended up, because Lowski got too far out front, and they had the outside lane if they wanted it. But they kind of broke apart, didn't push each other right. And then Logano was noticing they weren't working well together. So he used the energy from the inside lane because Lowski noticed he was kind of going back and forth. Like he was controlling both lanes. And so Logano, knowing his moves by being a former teammate, Logano's spotter used to be Kozlowski's spotter. And Kozlowski's spotter used to be Logano's spotter. Okay. They kind of knew each other's moves and what each other were thinking going into it. So that's where your, your point was right. Logano just made a hell of a move and a hell of a decision to let me ride back. He knew that I'm going to make a move on the last lap. If you're going to work, or we're going to wreck. And because Lowski being respectful, knowing he could have blocked the move and wrecked everybody, but he did it. So Logano lagged back, knowing the Toyotas, they didn't have a Ryan good enough to get up top. So he lagged back, got that draft, got a push from behind, and bolted outside to where Kozlowski couldn't block at the last minute. And then Bell ended up finally catching up on Logano in the, in the slipstream and gave him that push on the back stretch, and that was enough to Oh, yeah, once that happened, it was over. Yeah. So that, that, that was fun racing in the end. I wish we could have saw it longer, yeah. but at least it was clean. At least it, to me, it was better than last year there. At least it was an improvement um, compared to last year's show. I think both races were nearly four hours in length. This one was a lot better. So um, I like it. 
is it the end all be all there? I hope not because I kind of like it when the tires fall off a little more and you can see some more passing. It still was better, and it was yeah. better as you said in Phoenix. So we'll see if this week can can provide because out of all the road courses last year, and out of them, most of them weren't great. This was the best one. Yes. So hopefully, hopefully it doesn't get ruined. Uh, before we get into the race this week, a couple of uh, things we want to wrap up from last week that we talked about. And, and, that, and that's definitely the penalties. That was yep. the big story because we record this show about two Eastern uh, every Tuesday. So it gets uh, out to, the, to your viewers uh, usually no later than five o'clock. And the news came out not too much longer than that. And, and pretty much everything that you said could happen, the worst case scenario that could happen to Hendrick and Hamlin, but especially Hendrick Motorsports happened. Yep. And, and not that it was a surprise because as we were going back and forth, th- there was no other recourse. They, they, they had to, they had to put the hammer down. And so, and then it's so funny when you, when, when, you know, you got to do that double take when you, when you, when you're going over your research, you know, like, I, like, like we do on, on, on Monday and you're looking over at this driver standings and you go, well, where the hell is, Larson and well, the Hendrick Ball. guys. Yeah, yeah. What the, oh, that's right. I forgot. And they're all the way at the bottom. And this just shows you how. Now, look. The, it, so explain how it could affect them overall for the championship. Yeah. So with the Hendrick guys, they're negative. Other than Chase Elliott. And I was glad they didn't do this. They didn't penalize him because he wasn't in the car. Yeah, right. So, so it's like. You don't want to put him in a negative when he had, he's only raced two weeks and what they were confiscating for the Louvers, he didn't race when they confiscated him. Um, so they kept him out of it since Josh Berry's in the room. They're like, well, we're not going to penalize him because he's scoring points in the Xfinity Series. He's not even eligible for cut points. So the nine car was kind of given a grace. But the others, the 100-point penalty, so you got to think of what they already had, and you take 100 points off of it. And for somebody like Justin Haley, who colleague had a similar penalty, he's neg- he was negative sixty or negative forty points entering last week's race. Yeah, he's negative so twenty five. Yeah, negative twenty five now. So think of how you got to climb out of that. So in order to point your way in, we saw one guy get to do that last year was Ryan Blaney. You he was what fourth, third, fourth in the points, I think, and he was points his way in. Truex barely missed, and I think he was fifth at the regular season and okay. their point standing. When you have that big of a penalty, you're not making it back up there. There's just no way you're going to make up that Unless many points. Unless you win. So you've got to win. Um, so if it even get back to the points, the top 10 in the regular season at Daytona, when it ends, we're going to the playoffs, the top 10 in points get additional playoff points. So your regular season champion, which Chase Elliott was last year, you get 15 playoff points, 15 extra. Second place gets 10. Nah, third place gets nine, and so on. So what happens is this also pretty much ruins them from getting any extra playoff points. I don't see how any of these guys with that big of a penalty is going to get much into the top ten, if at all. It's just going to be nearly impossible. Okay. So you're not getting extra playoff points. On top of that, you already got playoff points taken away. So they got ten points taken away playoff-wise, which is the equivalent to two race wins. So basically, William Byron's two race wins didn't happen. They took the 10 playoff points away. So playoff points you carry with you through every round of the playoffs. So if you have 20 of them going to the postseason, you're going to have 20. And unless you accumulate more, all so you get through the first round, that 20 starts off the second round with it. it so these guys are going to have very minimal playoff points because you got to think how hard they are to get. Five for a race win, one for a stage win. And that's, that's it. So if these guys aren't winning races or winning stages – it's going to be a lot for them to move through these rounds of playoffs. It's going to basically put them in a box where you've got to win. And it, it, this could hurt Byron. And I could, I should preface this too. Yes. The two wins are basically taken away for playoff points wise, but they leave him alone for postseason eligibility. So he's, he's already in. That's not going to be a problem. In. He just doesn't have those playoff points. And I think he had three stage wins. So his playoff points are down to three instead of 13. Or somebody like Kyle Larson had, or I'll use Alex Bowman. I don't think he's got a stage one all season. Who's that? Uh, Alex Bowman. No. No. So he, he's, yeah, he's yeah. at yeah, he's at minus ten. So there you go. And so he's got, Larson is at minus nine. There, there you go. Minus ten, minus yeah, because Larson has one stage one. 
So for those two, it's going to take two race wins to even just to just break even, and then it's going to take a third race win to get positive. All the meanwhile, let's just say I'll just use Ryan Blaney. Um, let's say he wins three races. That's 15 playoff points he's already going to have, and it's going to take those guys three races just to get to the positive side of it. Um, okay, so so, that, so how or, would it look like? Let's say let's just go with. Um, Best case scenario for Larson. I mean, Bowman is actually not in bad shape. He's sitting 20th in points, and that's that's fine. I mean, I actually don't think that's bad for where he's at, except, of course, the playoff stuff. But talk about Bowman, Byron, Larson, Elliott. Talk about what's the best case scenario for them, and meaning not just how they could start the playoffs, but what would they have to do in order to win a championship. They're going to have to win races in the playoffs. That's going to ha- and that's plural. You're not going to be able to snake, sneak your way by on points. Like we saw Chase Elliott last year. Remember, he struggled kind of in the playoffs. He backed his way in, but he had all those playoff points. Okay. So he was getting by. So chances are, does that mean like at the very beginning, that first probably gonna have playoff to round, yeah. all of them might be going up against each other, yeah. needing a win to move on? Because think of it this way, and I, I, I might butcher the points, but I'll use the round numbers. But like, so you got the 16 playoffs. Let's say that the field set, and let's just say they win uh, a race in the in this regular season, and they're all four are in. But let's say they don't win a whole lot more. So we'll just they got very low playoff points. You take all 16 drivers and you give them all 2,000 points. This is what you start off. Here's your base. Now it's 2,000 plus your playoff points you accumulated, and that's what your point total is going into that round. So if they are at one, two, zero, whatever playoff points, they're at the bottom compared to these guys that have already won. So that's kind of going to force you, you got to be perfect. So that first round, even if you don't win, you don't like you Chase. You like remember, what, all top fives or stuff like that? Pretty much. Like remember Chase last year, wrecked in Darlington. I think he had issues in the second playoff. It takes your, you got to basically be perfect. And that's not and just they, in, in the first round but you basically have got every round all the way through yeah because the next round they bump it up i think to three thousand points in the same way out of the 12 drivers left it's three thousand plus your playoff points so really that's why for them this didn't only hurt them short term it's gonna hurt them long this is best case scenario this is best case scenario yeah because you've got to win now the easiest way to move on to the next round is win. win yeah but we've seen how hard that yes. is with all this parity. Yeah. It's basically saying you've got to win. You can't do it, but it's still going to be kind of hard to do. Yeah. And then you factor in the negative playoff points right now in the regular season to get out of it. They're not going to have the luxury of even those bonus points that other teams are going to get for the, the playoff points in the regular season. So they're, they're in trouble. It, it's going to hurt them long run, too, unless it's depending the outcome of this appeal. And that's where the whole thing is going to get um, – it really is going to open Pandora's box because Hendrick's side is we didn't, this didn't gain an advantage. We didn't do yeah. this to gain anything. And now it's like, well, you, can't, you, you altered a part. And Hendrick's like, well, the part was defective. It, it didn't fit. So let's say the appeal, because three times last year, NASCAR lost the appeal. They went in favor of the teams and the drivers. So let's just say that they, NASCAR loses this appeal Every other crew chief in this garage is watching this because they're going to say, at what point is like, well, I'm going to unbox this. Here's a stock part. We know it can fit, but it doesn't fit. Let's manipulate it to fit so that you open the gray area back up. So I'm curious how this is going to play out. I certainly hope NASCAR does a good job uh, explaining their position. Because so. that's the key. If they lose, it's going to have to take some new wording in the rule book, which won't change this year um, with this. Because even the Hamlin thing, he admitted that he did it on purpose. But according to the, the wording in the rule book, NASCAR came out and said too much, I think, on this uh, satellite radio show with him saying, hey, we probably wouldn't have penal- – we, we didn't penalize him in real time because we thought it was a racing deal. But he admitted, and that's actually detrimental to sport or whatever. And Hamlin's basically saying – but prove that I, I didn't manipulate an event. I was going backwards. If you did, if I don't say anything, which it doesn't say that in the rule book, then you, you penalize. So it's, 
NASCAR could have a lot of writing to do here in the rule book, but that's why everybody's watching this appeals process now is what's the result? So you got that, and then you got the Josh Williams penalty that should be announced some point today. But the Hamlin penalty was just uh, money, correct? Uh, he lost driver points, too. I forget. I don't have it exactly. But not much. No, not much, but again, it, it, it could affect his, his standing and – and the points yeah. going in the long run. So all right. So um, but but and and you look now not that Vegas because we've seen them make some mistakes before. Yeah. With odds in NASCAR. So when you have Larson at eight to one, Byron at eight to one, Elliott still at ten to one. Now Bowman is 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 for whatever reason at thirty to one. I'm not getting it. But no. Larson, Elliott, and Byron. At where they're at right now, why would you put any? Why would you? Why would anybody put any money on them right now? There's no reason to, because you don't know what it's going to. Especially now with the penalties, let's wait for the outcome. Yes, because if this gets upheld, then they're going to fall for fall. They should fall much further back. There'd be absolutely no reason. They should fall at least there. back to like 15 minimum. Yeah, because they should, because whether they will or not. Yeah, because they're long. Their runway's a lot longer now than it is. The other way. So, yeah, it's, there's no reason to take okay. them right now. Yeah, that's – uh, yeah, I don't I don't get that. But, hey, that's – got to take advantage of it. To, uh, Harvick is still 14-1. to 1. Yeah, and that's about he, he – who knows? Maybe he wins the damn race if he doesn't get uh, – you know, if, if the uh, – and I'm not going to blame Chastain because it's just one of those drafting deals. <laughs> Imagine if that was Denny Hamlin. Oh, Second week, that that would have been that would have been interesting, too cool in a way yes. to like see what would have happened. I'm not sure, Denny. I'm not sure. I, I think uh, he probably would have been waiting for Chastain at the end of the race. But oh yeah, uh, he wasn't making out of there without another conversation. No. So, but it was Harvick, and again, it was it was what it was. It was just a drafting deal. So, uh, and then the other thing we talked about was the the start the restart zone. Yep. So, uh. What is the final verdict on that? They're going to go back to what it was last year. They thought that it really didn't make of a difference one way or the other. Fontana kind of probably was an anomaly um, with the wrecks, but they thought the gather the data that we saw it's not changing much, and it, Fontana showed that it could create issues. So let's just go back. Let's just go back the way it was. It didn't hurt anything. So most drivers seem okay with it. That's what they wanted anyway. So. Uh, um, which is one of the things that we talked about last week. That was one of the things I was watching was how does that restart zone was it look because they could change it. And they announced today that they will change it back. Okay. All right. So uh, now we can kind of move on now. Uh, you're still kicking ass in fantasy, by the way. You got your yeah. first win. Finally. Yeah. As much points as I was leading by, you could sometime got to get a win. Yeah, right. And so there we go. And, yeah. and, and you got the win. So that was big with Logano getting it done. And even Kozlowski ended up with second place. Yep. Uh, so you got 60 points there. So that's a bonus because he's, he's your last driver, right? Yeah. He was my, uh, he was my last pick. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that's been a big one. That's a bit of big help. And, uh, and then across the board, really, uh, CJ started to lose some momentum. Uh, I might catch him soon. If, if, uh, cause he had Byron going for a couple of wins, but yep. you know, you gotta, gotta see what happens there with Byron. Cause Truex still has not taken off yet. Really Hamlin Bell's the only one, uh, that is really making any sort of major move so far and you have him. So, yep. and of course you have Bowman too, who, yeah, he, it was my bottom drivers, which was my process last year. I was trying to fill out the top 15, top 20 kind of, and Kozlowski's improved. Suarez was my second to last pick, and he had three top tens right in a row to start the season off. Wallace has been top 20 driver that I needed him to be. He's had a few mistakes oh, yeah. down there. Bowman was overachieving. I mean, he had a, up until last week, he had a top 10 every race. Harvick was looking what we thought he can do. So he was my, he was my fourth pick. Um, and then Bell, Hamlin, and Logano are doing – Hamlin, you can tell he's got some room for improvement. Oh, yeah. And it's a matter of time. Yeah. Yeah, it's again yeah, because it's Hamlin. We know he could turn it around, and Logano got the win, and we know, we've seen what he can do. So yeah, it's it's kind of gone exactly to plan what I was hoping it would do. Well, I I expect because if you really look at it, I have a really good road course team. 
Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you, I, you should get a uh, at least four of those. I'd say in the top ten. I expect the six road course races. These are the races I would expect to. I have to make a move in those races, having Chastain, Larson, Reddick, Sindrick, even Busher and Briscoe do well, and Blaney does well. Jones was solid last Jones year. Jones is okay, right. and he's yeah. the last guy. Yeah. So I have to start making moves on my road course uh, team. All right. Now, uh, as usual, playbooksports.com sponsors our uh, pick segment. We go over the updated odds and break down the race each week. And this week, of course, the race at Texas, Circuit of Americas. And we have how many? Picks the same. How many do you think? Uh, well, I'll tell you because um, uh, uh, you can have a hard enough time picking them usually, but not, not. I don't think so. I think this should be. I don't think it's gonna be hard this week because there's not a whole lot of long shots. I'll just say that you've got yeah. a lot of long shot. You have like five of them. I only have one. Uh, oh wow, more top heavy. Yeah, so we have five drivers. I was, I was gonna guess five or six. Um, Kyle Busch. No. Oh. Chastain. Correct. Um, Reddick. Yes. Almendinger. Yes. Three. Bell. Yes. Four. Um, if you've only got one long shot, then I'm going to say Suarez. No, Cindric. Yes. Okay. There you, go. there you go. See, I didn't think it was going to be that difficult, and there it is. Yeah. Uh, we neither one of us went with Larson, and look, for me, it was either. I had, I had to take two out of the four. I couldn't take three out of the four favorites, especially going with Larson at six to one. That yeah. is, what I was trying to figure out because he's, he, he should be a obvious good pick this week, but six to one was just, you know what? If I'm going to take two of the four, I can't take the favorite with with, with those odds. Um, when I think Chastain and Reddick, the two drivers I took, were are just as good. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I am concerned with Reddick, of course, is the is the is the change. The team that yeah. is the one thing I am concerned with. But he's starting to race better. He's got the back to back top fives, so maybe that sort of confidence will also come into play in the road course. And that's the reason why I still was steadfast with him instead of taking Kyle Busch or Kyle Larson. I, I was the same way with, with Lars because it's you just don't know what you're going to get out of him. I mean, even the season he was close a couple weeks, but he also has. He was second in Vegas, should have won. Phoenix, he was fourth. But his other three results are 18th, 29th, and 31st. And you look at what Hendrick did last year on road courses, and they weren't his strong suit. Larson was 29th, 15th, third, 35th. He won Watkins Glen, and then 35th again on the Roval. He just didn't look like himself. And this year, he's been more down than up. So for 6-1, to one, I thought it was a little steep. Yes. To go in that. Because... You're getting better value, obviously, behind him because everybody's behind him in the odds. There's so much better value to just, you know what? If he wins, more power to him. But I think these last few weeks have shown drivers that weren't supposed to win on these tracks are still winning. Yeah. And you look at Byron, never had a top five in Phoenix in 10 starts. He wins. Logano hasn't had a top five in, in Atlanta since 2014. He wins. So... There's better value to be had if you just ride that wave instead of going with that favorite. By the way, last year in this race, we all picked the winner, Ross Chastain. So we all had Chastain last year, and Ross Chastain last year was 25 to 1 yep. to win this race. And we all had him. You know why he was 25 to 1? Because Chase Elliott was 2 to 1, and Kyle Larson was 3 to 1. And if you're going, well, how did that happen? Well, it's because it was the first road course race of the new car. And yeah. everybody was just thinking, oh, it's just going to be like it always is. And these road courses, nothing's going to change. Well, a lot changed. Oh, yeah. And so now all of a sudden, Larson is double the money as he was last year. So, I'm, and Reddick, really? by the way, was 30 to one last year. Yeah. I don't, I don't think any of us expected him to do that. And, and, and also, Chevrolet, going into last year, they, they still, which I know we'll go over the Chevy pick a little bit later, they won all but one road course race in 2022. The final six 
of 2021. So 11 of the last 12 road course races was won by a Chevy. And then if you go into 2019 with Watkins Glen and Sonoma and the Roble then, and I wouldn't even back that farther, that far, out of the last 17 road course races, 15 of them were won by a Chevy driver. But you, that's why Hendrick was such good odds. We're not, well, is Hendrick going to lose their advantage with this next-gen car? I think last year's show they did, but it elevated other Chevrolet teams. Hence Reddit and Chastain and track, the track house organization overall. So I think without knowing what these new changes are going to do, and if Hendrick's advantage is still gone, I still think Ralt Larson's over, overpriced when you get Kyle Busch moving into this stable of manufacturers that you, there's better value with, with other Chevy drivers. Yeah. Uh, let's start off first of all with Penske because of, uh, Logano, of course, had the big win coming off the win. And I tell you what, that's like the main reason why I stood away from him this week, because I really like the odds of 25 to one. Yeah, I mean, those are really good odds. Uh, when you take a look at it, we know Logano is a decent road course driver. He's not bad. He's good. He's got he's got some wins. Uh, he was pretty decent last year. Matter of fact, in this race last year. Now, I'm not, I don't remember why he finished 31st, but I do know that early in stage three, he was in the lead until yeah. he basically got loose. And, and then I don't know what happened the rest of the race, but he was, he's in the lead. You know, he was set up nicely until he spun out. So um, that's the thing with Logano is that I just felt that it's going to be just like we talked with Byron. If I'm going to lose any time during the season, it's in a situation where a driver wins a second consecutive race. Well, so be it more than likely because it's just a hard thing to do. Yeah, it is. It, it, it was intriguing seeing. It was weird seeing him and Hamlin sitting right there at 25 to one. But as you said, it's just, is he truly going to go out and win this race? I mean, he, he left 14 laps in 2021, but it was in the rain. Yeah. There's nothing you could take over from that one. And, and he only scored a top 10 twice in six course races last year. Hence why I have him in these odds. And and one of them was sixth at Indy. But if you remember, right, he came out of nowhere. He was, like, outside the top 15, and he kind of packed people real low to Yeah, he doesn't wreck. lead a lot of laps on road, no. on road so, races. So. And he qualifies sixth in both races. So you're, you're, his odds, if he qualifies up there, are probably going to drop. So if you do, if you are out there and you like what we're saying about him, and think, hey, you know what, you're, you're right. He's led 16 laps there. Take him now because he, he, with him qualifying sixth both races last year, and Cedric was third, um, qualified in 2021. I think Blaney, I'll have it here. Yeah, he was on the pole yeah, last year. Yeah. So Pinky could qualify good. It's just they don't typically finish good on um, road courses. By the way, why were there – there were less uh, laps the first year compared to last the year? Rain. It rained. Oh, the rain uh, the first they year. They had a short and okay. couldn't see at that point. All right, so Blaney and Cedric are 15 to 1. And I did put uh, money on both of them. Just to get my money back. Uh, so, uh, Sindrick led 11 laps in this race last year, and we know he's really good on the road courses. Fifth at Sonoma, seventh at Road of America, and second at Indy. So, he's really good. Blaney, yeah. Blaney's more of a, of a, of a top 10 fantasy, a fantasy road course guy. Um, and sometimes he could finish in the top five. He was sixth in this race oh. last year, and he was really in the top 10 most of the race last year. So, he was there. And and you are getting fifteen to one, so I just figured uh, anytime I can get uh, that type of situation because Blaney I think is actually even a, a better road course driver than Logano overall. Yeah. And so I just figure, and again, Logano won last week, so that's why I figured, right, I'll put a little bit of money on Blaney just in case he wins. I'm getting my money back, and the same thing with Cedric. Yeah, and, and Blaney again, he had two top tens too in last year on road yeah. courses, but yeah. both both of them were sixth place finishes. He. He's a great fantasy play, fifteen to one again. As I said, he, he was on the pole last year, so he was ninth, qualified ninth in twenty twenty one. So or maybe twenty twenty one they might have started baseball points. I don't know if they were qualified at that point yet, but last year they were. He was on the pole, so that could always drop. However, it's which race did he win? On. Blaney? Yeah, road course. Uh, the Robo, Charlotte Robo. Okay. Yep. And I have a, a article up right now. Um, uh, about the top road course racers in NASCAR 
Um, even in the past and today, there's a chart and it shows all the active drivers and all the road courses and okay. where they've won at. So uh, it's up right now on the site. Awesome. So if you guys want to take yeah, a look at it. We'll put a link then on the description area yep. as, as, as we normally do uh, for reports like that so you can check it out. All right. So, and then um, Burton it did get a top five at Indianapolis, but that's about it. It's so far been a disappointing start once again uh, for uh, Burton. He's not going to survive past this season, correct, if he doesn't improve? I think he's got to do something because they are just out for lunch. And he's not starting good. He's not um, finishing good. I mean, his starts this year were 19th, 24th, 35th, 27th, 33rd. And then you look at his finishes, 26th, 15th, 26th, 35th, 34th. What's the difference between talent? When, when you looked at Burton in the Xfinity series and you saw him race compared to Sindrick, compared to guys like that, uh, did, did you think that he was on par or did you think he was a notch below? I thought he was on par. And I, I still think he's got talent. I don't know. It's odd because this is a satellite team of Pinsky. Yeah. So is this a, a Sueto fourth Pinsky car or there's some things that the Wood Brothers – who are a smaller organization to develop it on that there's a difference. That's, that's what I really want to find out is how much is the car similar or dissimilar to the three Penske's. If it's very similar, then that doesn't bode well for him at all. Yeah. Because the Penske guys we've seen consistently up front more times than not. And he's nowhere to be found. And that Indy finish was because remember everybody was taking themselves out in the race and he just yeah. happened to be there in the yeah. end. So um, even at 200 to one, yeah, I no, just don't no. think he's got a shot. Uh, and uh, RFK, Kozlowski, it's hard to tell what to think, but overall he's never really been that great of a road course driver anyway. No. But Busher, who's 30-1, to 1, that's different. Now, I was trying – look, it, it, in, in all honesty, looking at this race, going over everything, there are, there are a lot of options. There really oh, are. Oh, yeah. And this is – again, if anybody wants to put a couple of bucks on Logano at 25-1. to 1, Busher's the same way. I mean, you were the only one to put money on Busher. I just couldn't find a way to put money on him, but I wanted to because you're getting 30 to one. The only reason that I decided my only excuse was that he didn't finish well here last year, but that's it because we know he's pretty good in these road course races. He is. And I looked at last year, I thought the same thing. I said, well, that was the first race. What do you do the other road course races? Because it's about learning. They haven't done the left and right turns and the sequential shifter and all that. I get that. Um, second in Sonoma, sixth in Road America, tenth at Indy, ninth at Watkins Glen, sixth on the road. Yeah. All top ten. Yeah. And you look at what Kozlowski finished last week, and you just feel like this organization, you just feel this momentum building with them. And with 30 to 1, same odds. At, mind you, him and Kozlowski, they're – the odds makers are finally putting respect toward Busher now because it used to be because last year was up here and Busher's odds yeah. were like 60 to one. Yeah. They're both 30 to one. I don't know if that's a byproduct of Busher and because being good here and Kozlowski not or what, but he's a great value where Kozlowski, since 2021 season, he was fifth on the Daytona Roval, which is completely different. And then you go to his other road course finishes, 19th, 15th, 13th, 35th, 24th, and 20th last year. 14th, 10th, 33rd, 20th, 19th, 14th. Yeah. He's just That's, not no. – it just it didn't merit him for 30-1. to 1, But Busher, to me, is one of the top sleeper plays at 30-1 to 1 and top 10 finish every week uh, – on not every week, every weekend on road courses. He was there. So we've seen this these seasons crazy before, and now that strategy plays are open, you never know that what could happen. So that's why I went with a couple long shots just – you get a flute caution in the end, and these guys already hit it, and they're now flipped the field. He's got the speed. So um, we'll see what he can do. He qualified 22nd and 28th in his two Robles or uh, Robles Coda starts. So um, who's that? We'll Busher? See. Busher. Really? So he, those I, he, he had, those are pretty bad qualifying start, starting positions then. So yeah. if he qualifies well, watch out. Yeah, exactly. So All right. something to watch. Uh, and, and look, my first strategy when I was going over the picks, I started to notice that I was doing a lot of almost what CJ normally does. And I was like, but that's not me. I'm not going to be content just breaking even, you know, nah. going like nine picks and, and whoever wins, I'm breaking even. So that's the reason why 
I dropped Bowman. I, I was thinking of Logano. I dropped Busher. I dropped Harvick. So I dropped, and I was thinking of Larson. So there were guys that I was trying to get in there, and I just said, nah, I'm going to double it up with five or six drivers, and I'd eliminated guys like Busher. But I, I completely think that if you're out there, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put money on them, so I think you should put money on them too. You should, and, and the only reason why I went even longer to just – a little less money made this week is when it's these last two weeks with the winners that none of us saw coming. Like, I don't want to lose another hundred. Yeah. I just, can I at least get a, a little bit of momentum and a little bit of a profit to start? Yeah, you went that strategy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to start hitting some singles here. I, just, <laughs> yeah. I want to get on base. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll start swinging for home runs. Yeah. I just want to get on base. So that's why yeah, I, I Kyle Larson with- will lead like 40 laps and win the race. <laughs> then you know, and then and he was yeah. on the top ones I went away from. But then uh, again, we have all of us haven't been winning because he's CJ. So that would mean, let's see, who would it be? Logano would win. Yeah. So Logano would be the one that would win. We wouldn't. We'd all lose again. We don't capitalize. Yep. Yeah. So, so and I'm picking myself for him at twenty. Well, usually when he is, my strategy is to pick him. Remember Bristol Dirt two years ago? I was, was actually first. surprised when I was going over the 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 the, the, the results. I was like, nobody picked him. I, I know I, I didn't, only, but I was I, like, no, I thought one of you guys picked him. I, I was like, we all my, didn't pick him. Well, he was on my fade list before the, le- the the list came out. And I'm like, well, he's on my fade list for a reason. But then my brain went, it, it doesn't go with my strategy. Usually is if he's these odds, I take him all because that Bristol dirt race when he was 33 to one and he had no dirt experience. And I just threw $10 his way and he won like, you got to go with him in these odds. You never know what you're going to get out of him. And 25 to one just kind of seems like he's back there again. Yeah, but he did it again when he finished third here, the first race. Yeah, he was doing exactly that. He didn't win, but he he, he came close to winning. So he, he that's that's why he is a really good play in those types of situations where nobody's really been there before. Yep. And. Uh, and, and because of that, his odds are a little bit better, but unfortunately I don't think we have one of those races this year. Do we, uh, Nothing new yeah. this year, no, the Chicago street race. Oh, okay. So we'll take, Lug- we'll take Logano then. Yeah. Okay. Gotta take, he, he's the inaugural race team. So he'll he'll he, be on our list. Yes. Yeah. Gotta take him. Uh, Stuart Haas and let's see, you and I both took Briscoe. And like I said, I was, I was, I almost took Harvick. The only reason I'm with Sakarvik is I just again I just feel like he's sniffing around even even last week being in first place in a position where it looked like well wait a second I thought he this wasn't a good situation for him. I thought that historically same thing you know he's he's okay he had a couple of top fives last year he's runner up at the Roval yeah eleventh here in this race thirty to one. Well, we know he he's done a lot of stuff this year that we didn't expect him to do. So yeah, all right, I'll, I'll, maybe this is the week with thirty to one. Maybe he will find a way to win a race because one of these drivers could end up like Bowman last year. Yeah. That that could be Blaney. That could be Harvick. That you know, one of those like we're, we're pretty good at this, but we're not supposed to win. But somehow we find our way up there and the seize part, and we have a chance to win it. But anyway, I just couldn't do it. But Briscoe. 25 to one because he was six the first year. And even though he finished 30th, I don't know what happened. What happened last year? Cause I know he was in good position he, even in the third stage. What happened? He was run he's either spun or run off track on that final restart. He was up in the top five. He was battling for the win. Okay. So he would have had another top five. And I, so he was one I, of those guys that got, I think up. Kyle got him. I can't remember Kyle Bush or somebody I, wasn't on purpose, but I think they just hit a, a, a part of the track where two cars weren't going to make it through. And I think he was just the odd man out or he got spun into it or, or something, but he was up front. He's a pretty good road racer. So yeah. I went with him for that. That's yeah. 25 to one. Like it's plus I, I just struggle with Stuart hot because Harvick too. I mean, he had a pair of top fives on road courses last year. Yeah. He had no top fives in seven road course races in 2021, but two last year. And as you said, this, this could be a race. One of those guys like, see, you don't respect me. Here I am. But if any other was going to do it, that's why I went Briscoe's way. Just yeah. the cost has just been terrible this year. That's why I also was scared to take Briscoe because we saw what he did last year and he came into this year and he looked nothing 
like he did last year. It just seems even when they find the front, things go wrong. Like Almirola, they 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 had two drivers lead last in the final stage and both wrecked while leading at Atlanta. So it it just seems like they got to reverse the fortune somehow. And I don't know if it's reversed it's you all of a sudden you just get a win. Um, but they need to do something. Well, you've been piling up the futures dollars on Briscoe when he was at 40 to one. Oh yeah. And now he's 60 to one. I didn't even look at your futures this week. Did you add up any money on him this week? I did it because he was, he went that far. I was like, I, I'm not going to waste another. Yeah, you don't have to do it now. Yeah. You got time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll focus elsewhere. Unless he wins. But, yeah. Now if he wins, he's going to go way down. Yeah. But, um, but you have yeah, enough no, money on him. I do. I was like, I could, with this week, with him being that far, I don't think I did. I don't think I went much further than 40 to 1. Just, I'm just going to keep hammering those guys, sprinkling in. As another $100 would be like, ah, just in case, you're going to hole over here. So he's at 60 to 1. I, I could rest assured. Yeah, you might not have to put money on him the rest of the year at this point. Yeah. And you can I'm still make money. Him. Yeah, I mean, he, he looked, after he won in Phoenix, he went a long way last year without looking like anything. And then he makes a round of eight. And we've seen what. You can he do did it. Phoenix last yep. year. It, 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 we saw how much track position played a game there. Um, it's I'd just going to take a couple of races. Uh, something, something lucky could be a road course that yep. gets the momentum going. So, yep. twenty-five to one, he was the safer one. Yep. Almirola is terrible at road courses. Yep. He's been terrible this season. Um, Priest has done absolutely nothing this year. He's By the way, not. CJS Priest. Yeah, I'm surprised and he hasn't dropped him yet. I was too, because his finishes this year are 36, 33rd, 23rd, 12th, and 28th. And then you got uh, uh, Almarola. Uh, I just had it. Uh, he hasn't had a top 15 yet all season. And Briscoe, four of his finishes have been 20th or worse, so it's not like he's been much better. No. So it's hard to gauge with Priest if it, the car is on par with what it was with Custer. So it's like it's probably in the driver. And then you look at his teammates outside of Harvick, and it's like they're all back there together. So something's a miss, and that's where I struggle to think. Well, they've been that far off. I just I'm not naive enough to think that all of a sudden Sunday they're they're going to win. Yeah, they not Priest and Almirola. No, no, they need to really close the gap. So yeah, but that's what's good about these odds. Really past probably thirty to one. I know I took Raikkonen in just because man, that'd be a fun story. You can eliminate most of those guys. It just there's a reason they're not strong on road courses or some of the season. So I just I took Raikkonen just for the fun story if he would happen to win, and he's good on road courses. But I just that's why I eliminated most of the Yeah, the only uh, drivers that we picked that were over uh, thirty to one, you mentioned Raikkonen, and then CJ took Gibbs and Johnson. He put those are his only two long shots. He put a couple of bucks each on Gibbs and Johnson, and that was it. All his other picks were the top eight. In yeah. odds. Strangely enough, he did not put money on Suarez, though. That shocked me. Because uh, I'm, I'm shocked he did go Gibbs and Johnson. Because Johnson, he's won 83 cup races. 82 of them were on ovals. He's got <laughs> yeah. one. And he's been out of well, the Well, maybe he's thinking about the story that you're thinking about with Reichen. Yeah. I just don't think. And Legacy has been down. Um just it seems like they've been down this year. That I just I don't see this being Johnson. I think this is more Johnson wants to race and have fun. I just don't actively see him battling for the win. And Gibbs, he's got one top ten all year. And and we talked about is he Toyota good on road course. courses and uh, he was, but he also gives equipment and Xfinity yeah. on road courses as far. Yeah, Toyota. It's just hard to know that Toyota. If Toyota looks like they did last year. He's going to be – there's no way he's going to be better. If Hamlin couldn't – That's true. Truex that's true. No way a rookie is going to come in and do it. So um, that's why I didn't go either of those directions. He could have spent double down on those two and put money somewhere higher up. On Suarez. Yep. Uh, the last of the Fords to talk about is McDowell. And uh, McDowell uh, – not a surprise that you put money on him. Uh, so it's good one of us has money on him because he's a good road course driver. This is pretty much yep. it's road courses and and sometimes it's drafting and it's you, those are the two races that you go with McDowell. Um, he was top fifteen in uh, both uh, races uh, on this track. Third at Sonoma, eighth at Road America, eighth at Indy, sixth at Watkins Glen. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you're looking for one of those road course drivers uh, that are 
considered long shots, McDowell is definitely on you know one at the top of the list. Yeah, that's why him and Bush are, are my two long shots. I, I, Reichen was just a fun play. Just you never know. McDowell and Bush are kind of the more realistic sleepers. With as you said, they the, basically from Sonoma on. This race not counted just because they're all learning. But Sonoma on those guys are top ten on road course races. So you just got to be there in order to move the to capitalize. And I think those guys will be there. Are they going to win on pure pace? Probably not. But you never know what strategy play. Yeah. Now that the strategy bank is open, we'll see what hey, happens. Hey, you know what? Without the stage stops, maybe some know. other yeah. weird stuff is going to happen. So who knows? Uh, Joe Gibbs, let's go to the Toyotas. And again, you, you look here, and uh, the only two that I put money on were Reddick and Bell. Was that the same for you? Uh, yes. Okay, so, same guy so we both only did Reddick and Bell. Uh, Hamlin. Uh, Truex used to be the road course dude and how quickly that's changed it changed a lot he's yeah. 30 to 1 and he finished seventh last year but that wasn't even like you know he it was like he was doing anything uh yeah and then wallace interesting enough this track was like his worst track because he actually had a couple of decent finishes but nothing spectacular he's not that great of a road course driver anyway so yeah i mean and even hamlin you would think hamlin would be a little bit better but he hasn't done any. He didn't do anything last year. So again, that's Toyota's problem. But the one guy that did was Bell, and Reddick. Now this Reddick is really the mystery here because he he he's, he was on in a Chevy, completely different. He had the win at Road America, the win at Indy, top tens in the other in three others, fifth here. So he's nine to one. And Bell at 15 to 1, third last year. Again, it wasn't like a strong third, but he won the Roval. And look at him. He's third and he's second in points now. He, he, yeah. He's sixth or better in every race except California. So that's that's part of the reason that I went with Bell is that I figured he's doing so well that why not? Why, why, why can't I think that he's going to continue that sort of momentum on a road course? And he's getting 15 to 1. It's not like he's 10 to 1. No, and that's they're actually for my article later in the week. The the five things I'm watching in the race, this duo, or two of them I'm watching because it's going to say a lot about Toyota. I feel like because they were so strong last year, and Grand Reddick was with Chevy. But three of the final four road course races run last season, they won them, and Reddick was in the top three. Remember, he was part of that. Him and uh, Chastain and Almendinger, their three way battle for the win last yes. year, and he was. The runoff course, but he still got a top five, and Bell was the beneficiary of that, finished third. They both were top five last year here, won three of the final four road course races. Bell, like you said, top six every race but one. Reddick got two straight top fives. The momentum there, this is his first race in a Toyota, so is there anything maybe he learned from Chevy he could bring over to maybe help, or is it truly the car? Is the car the deficiency? So, I think this is going to say a lot about Toyota's road course because these two or road course program because these two proved last year to be some of the best road course racers in the game right now. And Reddick now wasn't part of that program. Now yeah. he is. So let's see if his stats go down and Toyota looks the same. Oh yeah. Then you know. So these are two drivers I'm watching, and because of that, and Hamlin just for whatever reason, and he called it. We're not going to be any good. He said that last year on road courses, and they weren't. And he kind of said it again. Hey, I don't think we made much gains on the road course package. No, we'll we see. need to win elsewhere. Yeah. And so we'll we'll see. And um, but because of him saying that, <laughs> yeah, like, man, it's you, you you call a straight shot, and you usually are pretty right about things. So I'll you say that I'll avoid. But and then saying that, I still put money on. It. Yeah, you got it. Driving. I mean, again, Bell and Reddick do deserve. You can't not put money on those guys, especially it's the first race. We don't know. It, it, you it really could don't. be different. Yeah, and if you don't put money on Bell and Reddick, and it is different, you're gonna feel like a, an idiot. So yeah, especially for nine to one and fifteen to one, they're just too good of odds. Yeah, because Reddick is, is fourth. It's not like he's even he's getting you know Larson and Kyle and Chastain are getting more money than he is. So yep. All right. Yep. Let's go to Chevy, and so we've already talked a little bit about Larson. So we know how good of a road course ri- driver he is, but th- look, he he just I don't even think he was. I don't even know what happened to him last year. He wasn't even involved last year in this race. He just wasn't good. They just did not have a good package last year. And again, that was a three to one. Yeah. 
Sure. I'm sure anybody that put big money on Larson at three to one were very happy about that performance. Little, yeah, yeah, a little bummed. Um, yeah, he he wasn't a factor. Byron wasn't a factor. Remember Chase in practice and qualifying? He wasn't a factor. He kind of moved his made his two way to back one. Up. Chase Elliott. Yeah, and oh, I'm looking on a list. Like, why is he not on here? Well, he's not racing this weekend. Yeah. Um, but they just weren't a factor last week last year. I mean, Chase was just kind of Bowman was Bowman. the best driver. That was it. Last year. Yeah, um, that's why I came close to putting money on Bowman because it's like, come on, he's still without the penalties. He's up there, maybe still leading in points, and he was second in this race last year and eighth the year before. So yeah. I was, I just couldn't do it, but I tried to. And they were Hendrick coming into last year. The further my Chevy point earlier, I said I'd come back to coming into the so the last few races, last few years, the last eleven total road course races coming in. The last season for so the final version of the car before the next gen, they won nine of eleven road course races. They were the team to beat, and they went uh, one two in Coda in twenty twenty one, one two in Sonoma, one two in Watkins Glen. Yeah, it was boring. They were just leaps and bounds yeah. better. And then last year they were one for six, just not even in the ballpark. So you just don't know where you get at them. Josh Berry isn't there this week. Jordan Taylor. Yeah, so who's is. this Taylor guy? He is a road course uh, IMSA veteran. The guy's won 24 wins, 25 wins in IMSA. Um, runs a 24-time IMSA winner. Got it right here. Um, Chevrolet drives a Corvette in their program. So he's good. Is he going to win but a not, None of these guys ever win this, these races at NASCAR. Just too hard, especially for him. He's never raced a cup car before. He's tested that Garage 56 car. That's why they put him in it, because he's going to race at Le Mans. But as far as, like, the sequential shifter, the turn left and right turn, it's just, a cup car is a lot different than a sports car. Granted, they're closer now than they've ever been. But of all these drivers we just mentioned, some favorites, do we really think his first NASCAR start, yeah. he's going to come in and beat them? Yeah, back. it's like 40 to 1 is really close to Harvick at 30 to 1. So yeah. why would I take Taylor and not take Harvick? And, exactly. So it, it, and, and then with uh, obviously Chase being out, and then you got Byron. He's, he's not had a top five in any of the six course road course races last year. The best finish was nine. Yeah, he's actually Byron's actually been at least hey, I'm top fifteen. That's okay. I, I I, that's I'll take some. I'll take happen. that position and move on. That's it. Yep. And I think that's what he'll do. I mean, he was eleventh and twelfth here, respectively, to two starts. Um, he just. He's not a guy that's going to finish outside the top 20, but he's not a guy that's probably going to yeah. finish the top five. No. I think especially with the points penalty, let me just get out of here to the top 15, top 20, and just let's move on to the next race. So if you already take the nine car out, you take the 24 car out, we talked about Larson, that just relieves Bowman. And it's, like you said, it's not like he was bad. No. And, and, and his, his other, yes, his other four road course races kind of left a lot to be desired last year. But again, he was runner up. And he's running the truck race again this year to try to get more seat time in there. So I thought for 20 to one yeah. and coming into the last weekend, he was the only guy that had a top 10 finish in every race. Yep. Just seems for 21 doesn't hurt. No, again, I would have had it if, uh, if I didn't decide to go the, uh, the different strategy and then AJ, uh, with colleague, I mean, we know yeah. this is going to be very, this is AJ's one of six really good chances of getting to the playoffs. And <laughs> look, he didn't really, if you look at last year's race, even though he got into Bowman and, and that allowed Chastain to win, Chastain looked like he was the, the, the better driver there towards the end anyway. Yeah. It was kind of surprising that he gave up the lead, though. It was like he looked like he was going to – matter of fact, the announcers, if, if, if you check out the tape, it's funny because they're talking about it like he's ah, – all he has to do now is just do this and do that. Like he's in the clear. Like, oh, he's – and, and all of a sudden, like about 10 seconds later, he's got AJ on his butt, and all, and then he's getting passed. And when he got passed, it, it's, it's very rare you get passed and, you, and you're able to come back. And that's why it was a really gutsy. It was the beginning, basically, of Ross Chastain showing everybody what kind of driver he was going to be, and it, it, that type of guy that would come up with that crazy way to get to the playoffs. That's that. This was like the beginning of of what we were supposed to see from him last season. It was, and and with Almendinger's case, 
I was a little shocked he was 12-1 to 1 and not kind of in the single digits. Yeah, those are good odds. He's won 17 Cup or Xfinity races combined. 12 of them are on road courses. There you go. He won the Xfinity race here last year. So he's good at this place. He was second in the Xfinity race the year before. So we know what he can do. Yep. Um, he was in the top three in that final lap last year. Uh, even the top ten late in Sonoma, I think he got punted. And then ninth in Road America, seventh at Indy, runner-up at Watkins Glen. Um, I think he's won like four straight years in the Xfinity Series at the Roval. So the dude can race on road courses, and he was there last year for the win. And you're getting him for 12-1. to 1. So I thought he was probably one of the better bargains. That's why over I took on. him over Larson and Kyle Busch. I'd rather get – I got double the odds with AJ yeah. over Kyle Larson. And we talked about Bell, who's 15-1. to 1. You just don't know what you're getting out of Toyota. All my with the same team. The same car, nothing changes, and you're twelve to one. So I thought that's that's the safe play this week is yep. in that favor. So it just baffled my mind that he had the same odds as Byron. I just <laughs> yeah, I guess that's seven. Yeah, that doesn't make any wins. sense. It's just Byron should sense. not be twelve to one. That's, that's no. They're yeah. kind of just telling you don't bet on Byron. We're going to throw him at twelve to one. We know you're going to go elsewhere. So uh, it just didn't make sense. And forget Haley. He's not going to do much, nothing here. He's a hundred to one. Um, Moving on to RCR, and you have Kyle and Dylan. Dylan actually had a couple of top 15s last year, uh, the last two times he's been here. So that's uh, interesting at 80 to 1. That's a little surprising. Uh, but Kyle, see, Kyle, it's like what there's to me, it's like, all right, Kyle's back. He's got the win. And we know he's been a good road course driver in the past. And now he's in Reddick's car. And look what Reddick did last year. So we're making Kyle the second betting choice. Yeah. I saw that, and I was like, I'm not taking him. I mean, there's no way Kyle Busch, in my mind, should be the second betting choice. I think he should be right there, 10-1, to 1, with some of these drivers we just talked about. I think Reddick should be – not Reddick. Let's, let's just even say I'm, – I'm glad Chastain is even, but I think Chastain should have better odds. I think AJ should probably have even odds. I think Bell should have even odds. So I think there's at least two or three drivers that should have even or better odds than Kyle. And that's kind of why I went – not that I don't think he could win. He's definitely in there for the running, but not as the second choice. Yeah, it was hard as the second choice, but I was what Reddick did in the car. Kyle was already a good road course racer, and Toyota just fell off the cliff last year. Yep. Plus, you put him in what Reddick did. Um, the other factor with two, I like him and Dylan, and I think there's one more driver, but in the off season to kind of get to know each other, work with each other, RCR put, I think it was a Trans Am car. It was, a, it was a car. It was a race down in Coda, this track. And I think it was the January range and they went down and raced and they won. And it was, they were, it was kind of like an endurance race where they switched drivers that kind of the Rolex 24 it wasn't that long of a race, but, um, the key was it was an RCR car. It was at Coda, and they won, and they worked well together. So I thought, you factor all that in together, yeah, eight to one. I mean, it's a little steep, but he's already won this year, so they can maybe take chances, swing for fences more. So um, I put all that with him. Dylan was it was hard to pick him because it seems to win big events on super speedways or yeah, something like I, that. I, yeah, that's. But his final two road course finishes last year were seventh and tenth. And as I said, he, he won like an all-star race down there back in January and he was 12th and 10th, his two races down there. So it's like, it's real intriguing at 80 to one. So you're that saying aspect. he's the best 80 to one or higher pick then? Oh yeah. I'd actually say if anybody from 40 to one down, he's the best. He's the best one. He's the longer yeah. shot play. Maybe. He, is he going to win though? I mean, He's only really won at Daytona and uh, the one race. That, again, well, Texas. We're in Texas, but I just don't see it. But, hey, 80 to 1 is worth a couple bucks as well. You see, the thing – my strategy with this race being different from yours was only because the, – the, the main reason was was because it's the first race of the season. And what we're seeing is like what we saw last year. The odds makers are going – Elliott's two to one. Larson's three to one. Why? Because of past history. This is the yeah. first road course race of 2022. They're doing the same thing with Kyle here. They're putting him at a certain level, uh, odds wise, because of what 
they've seen in the past. We don't know. Maybe Kyle will be the dominant car on Sunday. It's very possible. He's that capable. But we're guessing, and we're guessing with the odds being as low as they are. So that's why I kind of went more with the strategy of, hey, you know what? If I lose, I'm going to – it's only one race, one road course race. Now I'll get a lot more information that'll carry me through to the other five road course races. That sure. Even if I lose the first one, I'd rather lose the first one just kind of going with a little bit more of the proven and better odds drivers – which is what I did. That's all. It, it is. You should have bet on a guess. And that is kind of what you're doing. If you go their RCR route, is you're, you're guessing. You know, you think what they could do, but at the end of the day, it but would be a guess. But at least you did it where you had, you decided to do it for your entire platform of bets this week. That you're just going with the strategy the of, even yeah. if I win, I'm only going to make a couple of bucks, but I'm not going to, I'm trying not to lose. Like you said, yeah. I just got to yeah. get a I'm win. Playing. Yep, I'm playing not to lose, yeah. but that's why. Or, or else, yeah, you would be guessing with these so guys. It, so. we're, we are at different strategies. I'm taking more of a chance. Uh, and if I get a win, it's a, it's a big bonus because hopefully I'll, I'll – hey, man, not only do I win, but I have a couple hundred bucks. And yeah. whereas if you win, it's going to be, oh, yeah, you know what? I didn't go with Kyle or I didn't go with Bowman or, I, you know, it, but uh, uh, I'm 100 bucks behind you now uh, because yeah. of that. So. Yep. All right, and then Chastain and Suarez, these are can't miss guys. So oh, yeah. Chastain eight to one, Suarez fifteen to one. We know how good they're doing this year. And this is a no brainer. The fact that they're doing so good. We talked about Chastain and how well he was his gutsy win in this race last year. So he 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 wins that race, leading thirty one of sixty nine laps, fourth the year before, fourth at Road America last year too. Suarez was the stage one winner last year went with that strategy because of that, that kind of put him behind. Cause I'm not sure what happened to his car early in stage two. Something happened. He got to spun. Him. He got spun on the he restart. Did. Okay. So he was yep. done after that, but he won Sonoma fifth of road America, fifth of Watkins Glen. And you're getting double the odds out than Chastain. So there, yeah, you can do a lot worse than going, Oh, I'm just taking those two guys. Yeah, you could take track house or the field. I mean, that's how good they they won. And we talked about Bell and Reddick winning three of the final four road course races. These guys won the first two. They they came out of gates winning. And as you said, that strategy play where it hurt Suarez last year, who qualified on the front row. He was second. That's why he led every lap of that first stage. But the strategy, because of the caution, flipped them to the back yep. and then he got spun while back there See? so this year doesn't have to worry about you it. don't have that <laughs> yeah. so and you get them for 15 to 1 it's now it's track track house start off strong they kind of regressed a little bit the last few weeks can they get it back this is a big weekend for them to get it back yep. so I, i've got my eye on them and and like i said eight to one and 15 to one no brainer for both of those this week uh stenhouse forget him uh, yeah, not even worth not even worth the conversation on no. him this week. Uh, Legacy, you do have Jones. Now, Jones yeah. has been okay. He's 50 to 1. He might be the other guy that if you were thinking Dylan, then maybe Jones would be the other guy. Yeah, I mean, ninth last year, 10th at Watkins Glen, 11th on the Roval. Um, coming off of a top 10 last week, they're finally starting to figure it out. So he, he wouldn't be a bad one at 50 to 1. Um, he's better than Johnson on this line. I, I'm shocked. It's almost insulting to him they have him with – Jimmy Johnson at 50 to one, they, they're similar odds. So <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't get that, but for 50 to one, if you're going to go more longer shots, this is a guy that could happen for it. And, and one other guy, and, and um, I wasn't going to bring him up, but I figured, yeah, I think we have to bring him up. I'm, I'm not going to say he, we're going to pick him, but he deserves us uh, to talk about him based on the season he's having. And that's the other 500 to one shot next to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And that's Corey LaJoy. So um, we said, hey, you know what? If you, based on how good of a start he got off to, he has to have a good finish at Atlanta. That's a must. And that's exactly what he did. He did. Top five. Yeah. He's 14 in points now. Look, he would have been a little bit further back with all the penalties, but still, he's 14th in points now. He's not going to, he's not a good road course driver, but. I, I don't know. I mean, do you think Corey LaJoy can keep this up all season? I do. I, now, 
there's going to be tracks he's going to do better at than others. Like this one, 20th and 36th. There's two finishes. No chance. But yeah. top 20. That's what he needs. Pretty good if yes. he can do that. He He's in a position right now that, hey, we're five weeks into the season. He's still on the positive side of the point. So it's, he almost won Atlanta again, and we know what he can do. So it seems like he's even amplified it a little more elsewhere. It's not just Atlanta. He's got top 20s. I, I believe uh, everywhere but once. I think this season I got it right here. Um, yeah, yeah. Phoenix everywhere the but one. Phoenix. Yeah. So yeah, definitely better. Um, one driver we did forget with track house is Kimi Räikkönen. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. That's Your pick. pick. That's right. Yeah, fifty to one. Uh, again, the track house angle. Uh, fun story. His last Formula One win came here. Oh, was that okay. his place? So the last time he won was there. And uh, even the quotes that they were saying this week um, about why they chose this race for him, um, he's raced 20 times there in F1. Um, he led 39 laps that day that he won. Um, but even him saying, Here's I had a fantastic time in NASCAR. There was a lot to learn in a very short amount of time. This is regarding when he raced at Watkins Glen last year. But everyone was very helpful. The competition was a big challenge. This time, I get to race on a track I'm familiar with. So there won't be a steep of a learning curve. I want to have fun, but also know I can do well there. And Watkins Glen, he raced his way up to the top 10. And then he got spun in that bus stop, I think, in the second stage. So he was already there. And now he's coming to a track. He's never seen Watkins Glen before. He's, he knows every angle of this track. And he did it in an F1 car, which would be a lot faster than a cup car. So you got to think, he's, gonna, he's already got grasped this car before. We saw what Trackhouse did on road courses last well, year. And you get him yeah, that's that's the bonus. 50 to one. Yes. Yeah. So Grant, is he gonna win? <laughs> it'd be a challenge, but you never know. No, it's not, it's not I, so I actually think it'd be stranger to see it'll be a lot stranger, I should say, to see some of these regular cup drivers win, like Stenhouse or yeah. guys like that. That would be strange. But I don't it think it'd be. be like way out of whack to see Ratten and win based on I think that's the key. Is that he's he's going in there with this Chastain Suarez trackhouse team? Yep, that's 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 they, the key. Yeah, they've proven they could be fast there, um, and you're getting a guy that is fast. And and it'd be one thing if he was at Watkins Glen last year and he was just terrible. Sure, but he was really good. Yeah, sure, and now he's been. So yeah, I, I, I mean, think why is he? Why one. are you getting fifty to one with with, with Rackin in, and you're getting forty to one with Taylor? Yeah, doesn't make sense to me. Based on their history, and again, I know Chevy, Chevy, that's what I'm thinking. That's what they're thinking is because Chevy dominated both of these races, the first and the second. So, and Chevy is Chevy. But still, it's, it sure sounds to me like, again, Trackhouse may not be Hendrick, but at this particular racetrack it, and his history compared to Taylor's history, and I know I'm not saying Taylor doesn't have a good history, but it sounds to me like Raikkonen is probably a little bit more... He's safer play, yeah, and, yeah. and Trackhouse outscored, out won. They beat Hendrick twice last year, two to one. Hendrick only won one road course. They won two. And they'll go. probably take Taylor, Chevrolet driver, and it's, uh, uh, he's got Chase Elliott's car. But Chase Elliott wasn't Chase Elliott's the that's, old yes, self in that that's car. That's true, too. Life. Yes. Um, Riken improved very well in that car last year and the one opportunity and now he's back with a team that won twice so i just feel like it's it's a better play for him they should be even together odds not that the worst very, yeah all right um, so who's your top three um i'm gonna say chastain um almondinger and i'm gonna go reddit i still think he's over kyle yeah. yep really you sure about that? I just, I just feel like because of what Bell, Bell was pretty strong. Okay, and he wasn't great. Always known as a road course racer, where Reddick is, he's, he was in front last year. So okay, Chastain, Reddick, and AJ. Yep, with a long shot. I'm just gonna go Busher as a safe long shot for my talk about earlier. Yeah, that's uh, that's a good one. Next week, well, we're kind of staying with this short track deal for a while. Richmond. Then we get the disaster, which is Bristol Dirt, and then Martinsville before we go yep. back to Talladega. So not a lot of big tracks, but that's okay. Uh, California, the West Coast crap races are behind us. 
Atlanta was a nice start. And uh, we get the really good road course followed by Richmond, Brist, uh, Richmond, and uh, yeah, I just nothing's changing with that Bristol race because nope, they changed. Dirt. They changed the first race was day or night, day, and they day. changed it to night, which is better, better for dirt. So, so we're doing night again. We'll do night again, Easter night. So, and, oh, Sunday night, Sunday night. Oh, no. Yep. Okay. Well. But we'll <laughs> Yeah, that's not a weird. That's to me. That's like uh, one of those uh, one of those PGA Tour stops that I don't like. That I'm like, uh, do, do I really have to talk about this? Yeah, uh, I don't. Re- I just please. They got to get. I mean, and the thing is, is there was a lot of drivers that weren't very happy, and no, they're not they, they don't to. give a crap apparently. And I'm hoping that maybe one more just emphatic. This stinks. I'm sick of this. We'll just, all right, we'll, 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 because as we agreed, if you're going to do this, you do it somewhere else. Yeah. On a real dirt track. Yeah. Yeah. Do it somewhere. Do it a track that that already stinks. Yeah. Not Bristol. So, don't ruin our Bristol. But, yep. All right. So, uh, by the way, who are you picking to win the tournament now? Since Indiana's out, who's you? No, I'm not picking. Who is your, um, who are you going to back? I'm going to back the same – well, back yeah. – uh, Who's going to be your, well, your I'm gonna new back, favorite? I'm going to back the team that I picked. Um, they're still alive in UConn. I had them winning it all already. UConn. I actually, had, I actually already had them, and after these first two games, they making me look good so far. So they were my pick, and so I might as well back my pick at this point now that my, my team's out. Okay. So I think I'm going to go UConn. Alabama looks unbeatable from what I've seen. Uh, I watch their games. I feel like Karma should kind of take them. But the but, thing with Alabama is the, the other thing too, and the same with UConn and a lot of these teams is we, now we're we're gonna. Well, sometimes it doesn't work out. That's what's so great about the bracket, is that some teams get very lucky with the draw. Yep. It's yeah, like, yeah. Look at Michigan State. Yeah. It's like they might actually end up in the Final Four because all they really have to do because Kansas State's not been there before. They could no. you know they, they could lose. If they and let's say Florida Atlantic upsets Tennessee, which could happen. Could happen. Maybe yeah. Michigan State's in the Final Four with a team that basically was just eh all season long. I actually feel, uh, and I said I watched and covered a lot. Of, I mean, that was my background was basketball, and so I watched watch this religiously, like I do racing. And um, I feel now with this Sweet Sixteen setup, I feel like Michigan State is going to be the Final Four team out of that bracket. I mean, it's Izzo. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. At this point, coaching and adjustments and experience come into play. Yep. And you look at that bracket he's got right there. Florida Atlantic, Tennessee looked a lot better than I thought they would with losing their point guard. Um, I well, by think the way, they should Duke. never have been an underdog to Duke. No, They were better than I, Duke it, all year. Yeah, and then I thought maybe even losing. I thought the game would be closer, but... Oh, um, yeah, and that was surprising, yes. Florida Atlantic. Atlantic's good. I could see Florida Atlantic beating them. Sure. Um, but I don't see Florida Atlantic beating Michigan State. I can see Michigan State beating Kansas State because of that experience factor. That's a new coach. Isn't that second, first or second year of their coach, I think, Michigan or for Kansas State? Yeah, um, he's new. So I could just see Izzo taking advantage of that. And then I, it just seems like it's on brand for Izzo to go to the final four of the team like that. And then the, the bracket above them with Alabama and San Diego State plays a good they defense. Do. I think that. I was. I think they'll give Alabama fits because they like to run, and San Diego State's going to slow it down. But I just don't think they've got the stop. Let's we'll see. We haven't. We, I want to see when Alabama when they start playing a, a really good team. Then we'll. Because yeah. I don't. Th- no. I mean, my pick was Texas when the tournament began. Um, I do think Texas. They were going. They're at this point. I think they're coming out of that region. I think it'll be them in Houston. I think Texas comes out. I think UConn. Co- UCLA, even that big man with his ankle last uh, last week, um, I think Gonzaga. I, originally, before he got hurt, I thought UCLA would go to the lead eight and lose to UConn. Now I think Gonzaga, just because of the injuries of UCLA, I think because they had two players already out, so I think the injuries caught up to them. So I can see Gonzaga and UCLA, but that that Sadogo dude at UConn's a big man. I can't see it is. I just don't know if Timmy can guard him from for Gonzaga. So I got UC, UConn, uh, Texas, Alabama, Michigan State, Final Four, and I just think talent wise, Alabama's. Uh, if Alabama them. gets to play Michigan State in the Final Four, then basically their their road to the Final Four was nothing. No, and after I feel like UConn's been battle tested coming. That through, would be different. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I I just felt like Arkansas, they were a fun team, but I feel like they celebrated. But they're also that. a very good, very well coached team. Musselman's a really good coach. He is. I feel unfortunately for them, well, it's their fault. They celebrated that Kansas win like it was a national championship, and sometimes that comes back. It's like, dude had his shirt off in the stands. I'm like, you yeah, just, that's not know. You act like you've been here before. <laughs> know, right. You you got a tough draw next and uh, UConn and I that will be a good game though Arkansas UConn going to be that um, I just feel like you you look at that stuff if you which I my pick coming through that St Mary's was no slouch um, St Mary's and then Arkansas and then the winner of Gonzaga UConn and then Texas or Houston probably and if they come through that in the championship and you look at what Alabama came through yeah absolutely UConn's more battle test, so I, I think plus. You know, you get into these big football stadiums. Oh, Final it's Four, a different animal. Yeah. It is. And I just don't know how well Alabama can be set up yeah. for that. So there's my long uh, analytical answer if I'm going Well, hey, on. man, it was uh, the uh, end of the show, not the beginning. Exactly. So everybody exactly. can turn off, you know, the NASCAR fans. Cause they're, they're gone yep. already. So They are. They're, they're yeah. gone. Or they're like, hey, maybe. So if you want to wager on some of those we just gave you, that's, there you that's, go. that is kind of, Yeah, Texas is still 9-1 uh, to, to win the yeah. championship. What's UConn? I didn't look. Well, they've got to be probably uh, 15, I would think, at least. Probably. Texas is nine. They're probably 15. Well, so. Texas is, yeah, Texas is nine. UCLA, surprisingly, is eight, I think. They're ahead. Alabama, oh, I think, is the favorite at like five. They were five last yeah, week. Yeah, so they haven't um, changed. So, yeah, I mean, UConn being a four seed, and you got to think with Gonzaga as a three, and if UConn or if uh, uh, UCLA was that, then. Yeah, they're probably 12 to 15 to 1. Yeah. Oh, Houston is the second choice. You yeah, know, it's Alabama, probably, yeah. Houston, UCLA, Texas, and then uh, the rest. But, yeah, so maybe we'll get a Texas-UConn uh, uh, f- uh, semifinal matchup. And one of our That'd teams be will be in the final. There we go. Yeah, I've already put, <laughs> like you did with UConn, I did with Texas. And I also did the matchup. Because yeah. I, I got 30 to 1, Texas over Alabama. And thirty to one, Alabama over Texas. So just in go. case, I put five bucks each, just in case. Plus, I put my money yeah, on Texas. There you so, go. You can win you, it all. You could do the same strategy. You could do UConn, could, Alabama, UConn, and one of us. Like, that's got to be there more you go. Than I'm thirty to Mike. one. It does. So, that's actually a smart play. I'm probably gonna do that yeah, tonight. Actually, that. thanks. For, <laughs> I think I'm going. There you go. If you win, then you know you can thank me later. And if you lose, uh, there you, you know, go. Uh, keep, uh, sorry. Win some more on that race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So next week it's. What's next week? Uh, Richmond. Richmond. All right. Richmond's okay? Or no? How yeah. was it last Fire, year? Fall off and, um, I liked it. It wasn't you're on top of each other. Right? It was a better short track because it was day race. Tires fell off. It you used to pass. be boring to me. It did. It but was, it's, it's better? It, it had strategy okay. in play because the tires fell off so That's much. Good. So the, when the pit, when not the pit, just... If the TV sells it well, you could be good. But I, I liked it because you had... the TV it. sells it... Well, you know, forget that yeah. uh, chance then. Yeah. All right, so uh, these shows just keep getting longer and longer. The more, I guess, they we do. just keep getting <laughs> more and more traffic. So that, that, that's, maybe that's a bad thing. I don't know. I have no idea. So stop us. Stop us. Yeah, stop us while we're ahead. <laughs> All right, we'll see you uh, next week. And again, uh, right, subscribe, good. questions, comments, all that stuff. Uh, let us know. Like the video. Share it, please. And we'll see you guys next week.